it's 11.01. Um, welcome to the Northland Small Business Development Center's webinar this uh, Tuesday morning, May the 4th. So, you know, Star Wars Day for, for us uh, Star Wars junkies. <laughs> And um, one of my one of my favorite days for all the memes that are out there. So it's a digital marketing extravaganza day, um, for sure. So my name is Betsy Olavanti. I'm one of the senior business consultants for the Northland SBDC. I've been working um, in this in this role here for about six years, um, which does not mean I know hardly anything about digital marketing, which is why we have my lovely co-host here today. Miss Molly, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself as well? Hello, I am Molly Silberg, and I own Molly Silberg Marketing or AMS Marketing, and I specialize in just specifically marketing training for small businesses and entrepreneurs size businesses. So hopefully my goal is to train you completely so that you can run your own business and save some marketing dollars. And then um, I move on to the next and, tr and train away. So it's been extremely rewarding. I have been working at home or today I'm on the beach to get us all in our summer mood for summer marketing tips. So even though it's kind of a crappy day outside, but we're still talking summer. It's around the corner. It was here on Saturday and yeah. now it's gone, but it'll be yep. back again. Well, it's Minnesota. That's our weather. So that's how yep. it works. Yep, absolutely. So let me advance here. So the primary areas that the Northland SBDC serves is all of the Arrowhead here, as you can see. Um, and Molly works with our clients all over the region. So um, if during the presentation today you find something you'd like to work with her a little bit more on, um, those sorts of things, absolutely just send us a quick email. We'll send you all of we'll have all the contact info um, at the end of the presentation. So you can jump on with her and, and get some training if needed. So here we go. Let's kick it off. One, one thing to get started, we just want to get a little bit of the lay of the land here. So I'm going to kick off a poll real quick. And let's see here. The first poll we're going to do is how long have you been in business? I'm going to launch this right now. We'll give it about a minute um, to to see here. So it's how long have you been in business? Are you not started yet? A little less than two years, two to five years or five plus years is what we're looking at. So most of our folks, we do have somebody, Molly, who hasn't started yet, right? but okay. otherwise it's two years or more. Okay. Great. All right. Awesome. So I'm going to end that poll. And I am going to launch the second one, which is what marketing platforms then are you currently aware of or do you use in your business? So we're talking Facebook and Instagram, Snapchat, the YouTube websites, Google My Business, um, newspaper, television, radio, more of your traditional um, forms of advertising and marketing. Um, this is a multiple choice questions. So pick all that you actually do here. I'm just going to see here. Okay. Wow. Like, Everybody's getting some love. Everybody has a website and Facebook. Awesome. Right. Exactly. Nobody's really using Snapchat though. Well, I use Snapchat on a daily basis to communicate with my son. <laughs> <laughs> I don't use I it for heard... marketing. <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna say, and I have heard some folks do that here and there. So we'll see what um, what we have. But yeah, Facebook, everybody understands that one. It looks like websites, Google My Business, people are on there. Awesome. That's awesome. Awesome, good. I'm gonna end that polling as well. And we're just gonna find out what kind of business do you have? Do you have a lot of tourism based business? How much of your summer business is tourist based? Um, that will kind of so, help me tailor the presentation to should we focus more on your local clients or should we how much should we talk about um, the summer tourists coming to town? Mm -hmm. I know some of you were to own a resort, you're going to have a lot, you know, you're going to have over 75% as okay, so a pretty good chunk. Hurt. Yep. Yep. So there we go. All right. So you kind of have an understanding of that part of the land here. 
I'm going to end that poll real quick and launch the very last one, which is what one more poll. Business. I know. <laughs> Just helps us get 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 an understanding here. So what type of business do you do you have? I sell a product, I sell a service, or I've got something else going on. Um, and that's what we're looking okay. for. So, okay. so if you wouldn't Great. mind as well for all of our attendees, go ahead and pop right into the chat what you what your business or your service is um are you retail are you a plumber are you a resort owner that sort of thing that would be great molly and i could could peek at that and just get a good sense of of what's happening in our in our um in our our group here today awesome so you have a bath and body products from Cindy, she says, hello, Molly. Hello. <laughs> Services for individuals with disabilities, so definitely a service industry then. We've got one retail okay, and one right. service so far. Perfect, hello. Awesome. All right, so Molly, I'm gonna let you jump off here with- uh, Okay, great. With and your presentation, now that you have some knowledge. Well, and we have someone else there, Candace. Yeah, All fitness, right. recreation, rent. Okay, so a little bit of retail and some service. Perfect. Up in the lovely city of Chisholm. Oh, yeah. We love Chisholm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do. We love all our small towns. Perfect. Excellent. All right. We'll go ahead and jump off here and I'll keep my I'll keep the chat and the Q&A uh, monitored. Great. You can advance my screen. Perfect. There you are. are. Okay, great. Uh, thank you all for joining me today. We are going to think summer because that is our favorite thing to do after we're gone. Although I love winters, don't get me wrong. That was a good presentation we did too at the holidays, but now we're gonna talk about summer. It's very short. So how can we capitalize on making the most of our summer marketing? The three takeaways we're gonna be talking about today are tune up. We're gonna give our business marketing a little tune up and what does that mean? We are going to maximize all of the events that happen in summer. We tend to cram a lot of that in there when it's not our, we have our one, uh, you know, winter carnival ice fishing contest and then all the rest we pack into the summer. So we're going to be talking about that. And then what are they doing? So we have a lot of service-based businesses here as well as selling products. And we really need to get in our customers' heads and really think about what they're doing so we can cater our summer marketing to them. We're gonna have a little signal here. Should I, should I point? There we go. So we're gonna start up with the tune up. And when we did the poll at the beginning, uh, Betsy shared that and it sounds like all of you have a website. So that is fantastic. And hopefully you have um, somebody super knowledgeable that you can send an email to and they can get some things updated for you or maybe that you can handle that yourself and that would be great. Um, is your website ready for summer marketing? I wish I had control. Okay. And that means, you know, obviously pontoons is a, they're not going to have a winter photo here, but just to get the idea of picturing ourselves using your service, using your products by having that summer imagery. And there's nothing better than being on the lake and maybe having an adult beverage or a non-alcoholic beverage of your choice and going for a little sunset cruise. So you want to, you want your customers to be able to picture themselves using your product or service. And go. And this is an interesting one too. There is a trend for more video and some of you have the YouTube channels. In this year, in 2021, 80, that's eight zero, 80% of the content that will be posted online will be video, especially on social. And YouTube is the second largest search engine after Google. It's also the second largest social media channel after Facebook and before um, and above Instagram. So it is a powerful, powerful tool. Obviously, they had a drone go out and take a video over a lake. You don't have to have those those kinds of uh, you know, drones or expensive toys. You can just go ahead and use your phone and take a video that just explains what your product is or what your service is. And this is interesting too, because 
oftentimes when you embed a video onto your website, it takes up a lot of the bandwidth and it's really slow to load and that's not going to be good for your search engine optimization. They've put a um, just a snapshot of it. So what if I click on this, it doesn't play on the website. It takes me to YouTube and I watch it there in a, in a new window and then I can come back and watch it. So just a little um, example of the power of, of of video. So it should be part of your marketing strategy. All right. And if we're ever in doubt of what should be doing marketing wise, and we have a marketing budget of $100, then we go ahead and look at the folks that have marketing budget of millions of dollars. And so that includes Target. So Target is one of those where I clicked on their website. Uh, it was a little hard now because it's all saturated with Mother's Day. So hopefully if you cater to that in your in your business that you're talking about that now because people are making their decisions on what they're going to be doing on Sunday. And it's a very, very important holiday, Mother's Day. Right? Am I right? very it's one of the best days of the year so hopefully you've gotten that taken care of this is an example of target and what are they doing they're doing two different things they sell products for the home and they sell products for fun and so they've made categories summary home updates so this is telling me oh my gosh now i have to update my home for summer i didn't know that so now i better get get busy and buy all these products and see what's trending and then the other one is fun in the sun so it's showing sunscreen, it's showing beach toys, it's showing picnic stuff, it's showing road trip stuff, it's showing everything that's necessary to have some summer fun. So go ahead and find those people who are in your industry, but are national companies and see what they're doing. And then just replicate that on a smaller level. But obviously, again, turn to the folks that have million dollar marketing budgets to see what they're doing. And if it's relevant to you, go ahead and use some of those ideas. And this is also a trend that I thought was pretty cool. This is also Target and they have featured categories. So it's easy little round circles that shows all of the products that they have. Um, so again, we have to fine tune our website because all of traffic, they find you on social media or they find you on a Google business listing, your website contains everything, your summer hours, the summer products you have, the services that you have. Um, how they make an appointment, how they get a hold of you. It's there 365 days a year. So we have to make sure that it's been updated so that it's easily found in search engines and that you're rising to the top. So if people are searching for you, they can easily find you and they do that by making sure that you're updating your website. All right. And this is a service-based one. So these are our friends in Duluth at uh, Duluth Lawn Care. And it has three things. It has green grass for summer, a child, and a puppy. So they're like checking all the boxes for everything that you want to use for the summer. And it has testimonials about us and services, how to get in touch. So again, they've changed their imagery to create summer, summer in imagery to get you to use their, their service. So it doesn't have to just be product-based like Target. If it's service-based, and here's a local company as well, um, they're doing a good job. And if you scroll down, it's like, a you know, how to get in touch with them. So make sure that it's easy for all you service based folks. You have a big button so they can easily hit it and, and easily be able to get contact you or float a contact form or email you or call you. Let's just make it easy for them. And then um, the other piece that we need to get ready once we get a website all tuned up and get some summer imagery on there, then we have to make sure that everything is updated for local search. I know during this past year, uh, maybe your hours didn't change. A lot of people's hours did change. I, you know, I help a, a restaurant and they're now uh, fully opened, but they're having trouble uh, getting people to work certain shifts. So they have to close certain days. So their hours have changed 20 times in the last year. And what is a customer going to do? They're going to search online to see what your hours are. So make sure on TripAdvisor, Google, Facebook, Yelp, just make sure that you have a presence here. Google Business is great because it allows you a ton of tools. It's completely free um, and it comes up first in search engines and it's the most powerful search engine. But it's also helpful to be on Yelp. I know that you have to pay to, to upgrade your services on Yelp and TripAdvisor, but at least just go in 
and fill out as much as you can. Here's an example on Yelp um, and, and no need to upgrade. I, I specialize in making sure to get you as much organic free traffic as I can without paying for that. So don't worry about that, but just make sure that you have a presence on there. Um, it'll let you put your address. If you have one, if you're service-based, it'll let you put your hours on there or let you put your website on there. So again, if possible, make sure that you've updated your hours on all of the different platforms. So again, tune up, website, check, local listings, check. And then the next slide is, again, I talked about the power of Google My Business. And at the poll at the very beginning, for those of you that were here for that, um, most of you have signed up for this. And all you need to do is go to Google My Business listed on top here and manage now the very first time that you access it to make sure that you claim it and be able to update the hours. If you've already claimed the listing, then go to Google My Business and go to the sign in button, circle in yellow here. And when you sign in, Here's mine. I am service based, so I don't have a physical location. So I have my service area as being Wisconsin and Minnesota. And then inside your Google business listing, you have this full menu here. So I can create a post of what my summer hours or summer specials are. I make sure that all my information is updated. I can check insights month to month. So you can really check that summer traffic by going in and seeing how much traffic you had in June, as opposed to how much traffic you had visit you in May. And then that will help you tailor your marketing too, based on how many people are visiting. Make sure to get those reviews. It's extremely important. You can easily turn on a messaging service so that it sends a message to your phone. It doesn't give out the phone number or it doesn't let you know, the customer know that it's messing your, messaging your phone. I've turned it on for a few years. I haven't had anybody message me this way. It's, it's, it's gaining in popularity, but it doesn't hurt to just make sure that this is turned on in case someone is coming from out of town and wants to know if you're available. Make sure that you're always uploading photos, especially add a summer one to that. If you sell products, you can sell some on your product business listing. Here's all of the services. So again, I'm service-based, so I make sure to list all of the services I provide in here. This is a free website through Google, and you don't need that unless you're a really small business who isn't planning on building a website, then you can just use their free one. And then you can add a user. So if you've got, if you're product base, you have a retail location, you can make somebody a user and so they can help post and update hours as well. So this is the power of the Google business listing. So check out that box and, and we'll have everything on our tune up section ready to go. Again, just another idea of this is the back end of my Google business listing. So just make sure that you pick a category here that is, so if you are in a retail space, you would do gifts or gift shops here. That's the most popular thing to search for. So make sure that that's the category that you use. But again, this just shows you the power of everything that Google business can offer you and offer potential customers that are searching for you. And again, if you have a physical space, make sure that you are constantly up grading your photos and adding new content because if you don't um, here's our friends up in Ely that have the log cabin and they have updated their photo with a very summary picture so it makes me want to visit there and have coffee this is Stony Ridge Cafe who has a really lovely place but their Google business listing just has the back side of their um, property listed, which isn't as attractive as showing a beautiful plate of food and the beautiful view that they have. So make sure that you're going ahead and making this a, a, a great summer photo. Not that I don't love having selfies with grandmas because I would love to pop in there and say hello and get in there and get my selfie in there. Um, but again, I would update this to a, a summer photo. And make sure that you're always asking for reviews. Reviews for your products on your website are a powerful tool to get people to purchase that. Uh, or if you're service-based, 91% of consumers say that positive reviews will make them more likely to use a service. I was just here in town searching for someone to refinish our hardwood floors. Google gives you a listing of three. So 
I know that there's 15 hardwood floor refinishers in Duluth, but they only give me the top three. And how they get those top three is based on how many reviews that they have is one of the criteria. So make sure that you're always asking your customers for Google reviews. I know there's a few of you on here who have left me fabulous Google reviews. So thank you for that. It's a extremely powerful tool. So reach out to all of your friends, family, and past customers and ask them to leave you a Google review. That will get more summer traffic in business. Next. And once you get those awesome reviews, make sure to answer them, whether they're good or bad. If that's a bad review um, and you sleep on it a little bit and then answer it, it's it's really helpful for the future customer to see that you've handled the problem respectfully, that you kept your calm, and then we can understand too if the customer was being unreasonable and you handled it well, then it's not going to have that much of an impact. But there's nothing much you can do with a bad review, but bury it with good reviews. And Google will reward you for answering a review. It'll say, wow, you answered the review, you're taking care of Google's customers, and it notifies the customer customer that you've left a review. And so then it gives them a positive experience like, oh, wow, I did have a really great meal at the Molly's Cafe and she answered me. So I'm going to make sure that when I travel up to the lake again, that I stop at Molly's Cafe and get her eggs Benedict or veggie omelet. Mm, I don't know. They both sound delicious. Now I'm going to open a cafe. And make sure you're also creating, besides getting reviews, that you're creating a post within Google and make sure that you use summer, summer imagery. So we're gonna talk about all of the summer marketing that we can do. So just make sure that you're using really summery pictures and I'll show you and give you examples of how to find fabulous summer pictures like this. This isn't a real background, by the way. This is just a summer image. <laughs> I'd love to be on this cartoon beach right now. That is our, that ends our tune up section. Now we're going to move into our actual summer marketing ideas. And when we're thinking about summer marketing, I really want you to understand the importance of keeping it simple. Again, hey, Molly, yes. one quick question before we, before we jump further here. Um, one of our attendees is wondering, do you know if you get a fake review, can you ask Google to review and remove it? Yes, you go into that review and you can hit report and you can report it and then it will give you a reason. It will ask you a reason why you're reporting it. And then there's a spot for you to put other so you can check that it's spam or blah, blah, blah. And sometimes um, the person has never visited your place. I, I have had a lot of reviews removed that way. I have had some where they've come back and said generically, like a robot looked at it and said, it's it's fine. So you have an area to report why, and you can go in there and write a really valid reason for it. And then hopefully it will get, it will get taken down. If it doesn't get taken down, then you could respond by, I've looked through my records and you've never been a customer. And then future customers know like, oh, this was just a total spam one. Um, so you can go ahead and answer that if they don't remove it. And again, bury it with good reviews. Make sure that you get lots of positive reviews. Great question. Now we'll go back to the uh, keep it simple method. So again, uh, the past year we have had pandemic and changes. So make sure to spell it out again because now it's summer season and um, it's always changing. The regulations are always changing for um, how many people, capacities, masks, all that stuff. So just spell it out. What are your products? Tell me again. What are your services? Tell me again. What are your hours today? Let me know, what are your summer hours? Change them on all of your listings. Do you do shipping? Can I still um, pick a product up? Because we've gotten to the habit of that. So even though I'm fully vaccinated, I still wanna take advantage of um, going to as many local restaurants as I can. But now that it's gonna be summer, I don't necessarily want to sit inside, even though I can. I still wanna be able to know that there's curbside pickup, there's still delivery available. So my habits have changed a little bit um, as far as where I use your products and services, but I make sure to still use all of your products and services, all of our local business friends. I talked about using video ads to promote your summer specials. 
again, 80% of the content out there is going to be video. So just tell me what your specials are on video. If you are not comfortable on video, you can get a fabulous background like this, turn your camera around and say, here's a beautiful summer picture. And here's the summer specials that we have. Here are the services that I provide and here are my summer hours. Summer is usually a time for limited time offers. So you can see how well that does if you have a lot of traffic in the summer. Just try a limited special, just June only, or the first week of June, or welcome in summer, we have a special that's five, 10% off, just to see how well that that does in your summer marketing plan. All right, keep it simple, spell it out. Next. Hey, and focus on holidays. I said at the beginning of this presentation that everything is smashed into summer. So come up with a marketing plan. I know I talked about uh, the popularity of Mother's Day coming up this Sunday and how it's a huge national holiday um, in my household anyway. Well, there's Father's Day too. So we've got to give them some, we've got to give them a shout out. Um, so that is June 20th this year. So if there's any services or any products that you provide um, to fathers, make sure that you're talking, make sure that you're thinking about that now, going out and finding a picture of, of, of a father, um, maybe using your service, maybe using your products, but make sure that you have that marketing plan figured out now. And then shortly after uh, Father's Day, pretty quickly after that, people are already starting to think about their 4th of July plans. I'm starting to think about it now. And we're starting to hear from city after city that the parades are going to be back on, um, that some of the festivals are opening up. So people are making their plans now for that summer holiday. So make sure, and if you don't have anything, you know, you don't have to sell fireworks to talk about or you know, hot dogs to talk about 4th of July. If people are traveling, um, Maybe there's a service that you provide and people are going to be traveling and be gone. So maybe you tell people, hey, why don't you contact me ahead of, I have a 4th of July special going right now um, at the beginning of July or after July. And then we have Labor Day in September. So make sure that you plan a special or something around then. And also uh, maybe go to the next slide to see what I have. Okay, uh, this is highlighting summer trends. But again, going back to I have the main holidays listed there, the, you know, 4th of July and Father's Day, but each and there's too many to name. Um, I know my son every year went to the uh, Hoyt Lakes, they have like a water carnival or something that has to do with water. I know there's something going on in um, Hibbing, Duluth has sidewalk days, you know, e Ely with the Blueberry Fest. I mean, every single small town has a festival going on. So are you gonna have a booth there and talk about your services? Are you going to, it's gonna be bringing the tourists into town. So make sure that you're talking about all of those events that are happening in your town, just to get the local awareness out and you're joining the local, you're joining the wider conversation. You know, if um, 5,000 people attend the Ely 4th of July parade, if you're in Ely and you're talking about that, you're joining that wider conversation and you are being a good partner of the community and then you're bringing more awareness to your product and service because you're talking about a popular event. So that's the event section. But then we talk about highlighting summer trends, graduations, weddings, summer vacation items, and back to school. So if you have anything to do your products yeah. or services have anything to do with one of these i have a client that's a mexican restaurant and so i said you know for graduation parties are going to be back on they're going to be outside and you should be promoting right now that people can come and pick up everything they need to have a taco bar you'll get the meats and the beans and the rice and the lettuce and the shells everything that's included you'll deliver and drop it off whatever that would be so if you have a service or a product, graduations bring along a lot of, you know, life changes. So actually right now at my son's college, graduation was last week. So, and that's April. So that's like super fast. So colleges are happening right now. And then you have another month before all the high school graduations will start happening. So there's a whole month cycle of those. So May is all the college graduations, June is all the high school graduations, and the parties sometimes go to July. So make sure that you talk about that. Weddings. 
weddings are going to be back on too. So any products or services that you have around that. Summer vacation items, that's anything to anything car related to traveling. So you could be, you know, selling tires and that's definitely relevant to summer travelers. And then obviously the back to school, back to school specials, people start shopping for that uh, in August. Yep. Unless you're me and then it's the day before school no. starts. No. <laughs> I'm over it, Molly. <laughs> All right, here, let's advance. Perfect. And here's another summer idea is to talk about having a summer photo contest. So especially those of, and you know, any product or service that you provide, it's really a fun way to get your customers involved in taking photos and uploading them. And then it gives you content to use because then, you know, ask that you have permission to use some of the I'll only upload photos that you want to use in some promotional marketing. So it's a really good way to engage your customers. And even if you provide a service that doesn't have anything to do, it still would be fun to just see some, some, some people's fun photos. And maybe the winner just you know, gets a pat on the back or a sticker or a t-shirt or some pens or, or a $5 gift card. So the, when I was at Duluth Pack doing their marketing for 11 years, we had a really huge success with having these little photo contests. Next. And here's an example of our friends up at Pearson Lodge on Lake Vermilion. They have a um, Memorial Day, they have a fishing contest and you know they win a hat, but yet they have all of these photos to use for their contest. Uh, Memorial Day fishing contest, prized for the biggest crappie northern walleye to enter, email or tag. So they're asking people to use the tag PLR Fishing 20, 2020. This year they'll do it again, 2021. So they're getting all of the social media channels that are posting on their new posting in this page, they're tagging Pearson Lodge in it. And so now Pearson Lodge has, you know, 3000 followers. So they're seeing it, but then it's everybody that is tagging it. So it's appearing on their newsfeed and tagging it. And I know this because the holder of that largest Northern happens to be my son, whose name is Fisher, by the way. Um, and he's rolling his eyes at college right now that I'm using this photo, but no, he's not. He's an only child, so he's fine. He's totally fine with it. Uh, but I know for a fact that I shared this photo. Pearson Lodge shared the photo. His grandmother, my mother, shared the photo. His paternal grandmother shared the photo. And so this photo of him was seen by thousands of people, and that was just the one photo. So you times that by everybody else that entered and times that by everybody else that's a winner. So Again, it might not be relevant to you, but find something that is relevant to your business that you could use as a photo contest because it increases your reach by thousands. So we can create beautiful ads without much work. Again, I work with small businesses who have zero dollars for their marketing budget. So my best friend here is the website Canva, C-A-N-V-A. I've underlined it here. And I just went into Canva, C-A-N-V-A, and I use the free version. And I just entered in summer and it gives me all of these templates to use. So if I find this cute little template here, I can click on it and I can change it to Molly's Cafe. And I'm going to say it's, uh, you know, we're featuring mango pancakes or something for summer to highlight summer. And then you can save it and upload it onto your social media. So it looks like you're being professional and all you're doing is just looking up summer templates and Canva is huge for that. Is it canva.com, Molly? I think so, yeah. Cause I'm gonna say, I'll just share that in the chat as well so that folks can, uh, can click on it and go from there. Yep. Yeah, yep. And some of the fancier ones you might have to pay like 99 cents for. Um, you know, but maybe it's worth it if that's if that's your marketing budget. Perfect. Yes. And from Nicole, she says Adobe Spark Post is a similar solution, although Canva does offer more features. Thanks, yep. Nicole. Yep. And I think that this like this background was actually like Adobe Spark. So you're absolutely right on that. Another great resource for photos that are free is Unsplash. So I've 
upload photos for everyone on Splash. And I use this a lot for websites that I build to create those professional photographs. I just typed in summer and I just found these beautiful imagery because I said at the beginning, we need to tune up our website and we need to do that with summer photos. Well, you can easily find a summer photo that is relevant to your product or business by searching on Unsplash. And then again, you have a high resolution image that you're allowed to use for free. All right, take it away. Oh, this is where I have my capitalize on local summer events. Uh, I Again, I found this image um, on Unsplash and the three and I want to be there right now and I may or may not have had the deep fried sticker bars at the fair but pretty good so everybody added deep fried snickers to your product or service uh this summer there's a, just a free marketing tip for me yeah that'd be great so again find out what local events are going on in your area and capitalize on them everybody has a local uh, there's one that's listed on the Explore Minnesota website that's talking about the the fourth best is back on at um, Bayfront Festival. So it's a big deal here in Duluth and there's a lot of vendors selling things. So just make sure if you're in the area to check that out and otherwise capitalize on your local business event. Like Cook's Timber Days. My dad rushes there first get those mini donuts every time he goes to Cook's, Cook's Timber Days. Make sure to use your social media channels now that you've created a beautiful summer image with Canva or Unsplash or Adobe Spark. Now you're going to post that on everybody has Facebook from the poll or Instagram. And if that, and that post is doing well, you have a summer sale, you want to highlight your products or services that you have, go ahead and boost that post. You can, here's your stars, people who like your page uh, or people who like your page and their friends. And then just go ahead and spend $10 and launch it for a week. So again, we're reaching everybody that is your target market for a small amount. And you're highlighting that beautiful summer image to show the, the services that you have or the products that you sell. Uh, here's an example of some paid promotions in, in my Facebook feed. It's Land Zen, who clearly knows that I have been living in yoga pants for 15 months and is like, you know, it's summer around the corner, Solberg. You should probably, you know, get, and of course it gives me like the tummy control swimsuits and the nice lounge, the nice lounge wear at the cabin. So summer sales are in full mode on, with the bigger, with the bigger companies on Facebook. And the next one is same thing, Halloween. They know. And I love that it's stretch pull on shorts. So again, keeping with the pandemic, I've been living in my yoga pants for 15 months. It knows me. Facebook knows. Facebook has an amazing algorithm that you can use to your advantage. So again, summer marketing. Let's start, let's start today. And video, I know I'm just hitting you over the head, reminding you about video, 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 but just make sure that you're really highlighting all of your summer messaging and using video as part of your strategy. And I'll just show you more statistics, but I've already told you 92% of mobile video consumers share videos with others, 92% crazy. 90% of users say that product videos are helping them in making their decision. 80% uh, of online viewers recall a video ad they viewed in the past 30 days as opposed to a text ad, 80%. So even if you take your ad and turn it into a video, 80% 80, 80 of those people that watch that will, will recall it. 50% of users look for videos related to a product or service before they visit your store or your website. Oh, and we have another free video offer. Yeah. Sweet. Yay, Nicole. So, we got to yeah. get her on as a panelist. She's a wealth of information today. Right. So awesome. Nicole says free video offer from Spectrum Reach, which is Duluth area. And she shared the link for that in the chat for all of our, our folks attending waymark.com forward slash videos forward slash connections forward slash spectrum hyphen reach. So for nice. folks that are watching this later and it's not on there. Because chat oh, doesn't have to show nice. up in the recording. 
Nice. All right. Yep. So and about half of marketers plan to add Facebook or YouTube videos to their strategy. So wow. that is the summer events that we're going to capitalize. So this is the last section that we're on now. And it's like, what are they doing? Are they road tripping and they're on their way? They're passing through your community. They're already there. There's those people. And then there's the people at home that are doing research online before they before they visit, uh, before they plan their summer vacations, when they're talking about their summer marketing. So we're kind of re talk people that are already in the car that we want to reach passing by, and then the people that are home researching. Next. So another thing, if you have um, a service that you provide or a product, people are looking when they're traveling on the road trip side, they're looking for things to do in Ely, things to do in Duluth, things to do in Chisholm, things to do in Grand Marais. They're searching for things to do. So on your website, you can have a, a section on, you know, things to do in town, and then your website will join the conversation of people searching for things. Um, obviously, it's TripAdvisor, so that's an important. We already talked about setting yourself up on TripAdvisor because it shows up first, and then it shows Google Business Listings underneath that. So again, two powerful tools, TripAdvisor and Google Business Listings. So even though you provide a service, you can still have a little section on your website that talks about you know things to do in your area so that, again, your website is brought up into that conversation. And again, things to do in Ely, uh, 15 best things to do in Ely. People also ask, which is super interesting, things to do in Duluth when it's raining. And that doing a low energy trip. And we went to the Tower Sudan mine because we'd never been there before. Um, and then we went to Ely and it was raining. So I actually looked up in Ely, things to do while raining. And we ended up going to the Wolf Center because of that. So again, if that's relevant to you, um, you can add that content to your website. Things to do in, in, in your area when it's raining so people come and visit you. All right. And then at the bottom of the search listing, it says, okay, Molly, you are searching for things to do in Duluth. And this is what everybody else is searching for. Things to do in Duluth today, unique things to do, family things to do, romantic things to do shopping and hotels so if you are if any of that applies to your business shopping hotels maybe you're next to a hotel romantic family and unique all of those are things people are searching for so make sure that you use all of those keywords in your google business listing TripAdvisor, yelp website social everything in your description so that you'll be found by people that are coming up and searching in your area and then we have just completed everything on this to-do list that Molly said. We've updated our website. We've made something really cool on Canva and shared it on Facebook and Instagram. We've boosted a post. We've done a photo contest. We've had a sale. We featured a holiday or an event. We're gonna go back. This, It's gonna get cold. I know we're not even, we're still cold. We gotta wait to get warm, but then we're gonna get cold again. So use that time when we're huddled up on a blanket to go back and look at all of your insights. You can go to your Google business listing and click on insights and see what kind of traffic you had. You can go into social and look at your Facebook business insights and see how much traffic each post got, how much engagement, and then write down what worked because you're gonna do it again next summer. So we don't have to reinvent the wheel each time. You know you had a successful 4th of July promotion, you're gonna do it again next year. So make sure that if you're putting in even a little bit of this effort or implementing one of these ideas, that you monitor it, check the results and go ahead and do it again next year. Push the button. So we had talked about tuning up our website, summer marketing, Google business listing, Yelp, TripAdvisor, all of those other pieces, social media. If you get a really cool image on your website, you should copy that over to Facebook and Instagram. Branding and recognition, I want to see the same image all across all platforms maximize all of the summer events. You've got some summer tourists coming to town. You've got some locals that are dying to get out and get back into their community and 
attend some of these festivals, sidewalk sales, 4th of July's, weddings, graduations, whatever it is. And then the last piece is what are they doing? Are they sitting in a car researching the town that you're coming to, um, your town? Then make sure that you're talking about all of those events um, on there. And I know with um, Candace being so close to Redhead, she should be talking about, and she does, talking about Redhead just opened up now, mountain biking trails, uh, to keep abreast of what's going on there because that's relevant to her business and she's joining that wider conversation. And then think about uh, what are they doing? Are they sitting at home planning, planning um, to use your services? Are they uh, planning to, to travel and use your services? So really try to reach the, that local market um, that might be they might be, you know, what are they, what are they thinking now? It's summer, it's nice out. Uh, my son, husband is in the construction field and he can work in interior homes all year long, but sometimes they wait till it's nice outside and then they call him to do interior work. And he's like, you could have called me in February to do interior work, but something in people's mindset is once it gets nice out, they want to get a bunch of projects done. So if you're service-based in that way for homeowners, then make sure that you're talking about that just get into the mindset of your customers and that would be super helpful okay Molly, we have a quick question here it says if you have time can you speak to hashtag best practices or key things to include yes so we can see uh, from an example from the pearson lodge fishing video on facebook it's one hashtag if you have anything more than one hashtag on facebook facebook you get lower engagement people do not like hashtags on Facebook and they will move away from them. On Instagram, um, it's between seven and 11 hashtags that get the most engagement. So go ahead and use more on Instagram. And if you want to know what Instagram hashtags to use for your business, you go ahead. Like I said, you know, if you sell products that are similar to products sold at Target, then look at Target's Instagram and see what they're using for hashtags. And then and then copy those, you know, hashtag summer, hashtag summer photo contest, whatever that might be. But if you're on Facebook, have one hashtag that is relevant to your business. So I would be, you know, hashtag Molly's marketing tips. And so that all of my clients could use that hashtag if they find a tip that works for them. And then they'll be all compiled in one area. They create its own little search engine pile of topics. So again, on Facebook, come up with one hashtag that's relevant for your business. And then on Instagram, you know, copy those hashtags that are popular among industries, businesses like yours, but that are more national. And that's kind of the, that's, that's kind of the last slide. If you want, you know, feel free to reach out and ask me any questions. I'm at molly at mollysolberg.com. My website is mollysolberg.com. My Facebook page is Molly Solberg Marketing. I also, with my child, I'm an only child. So I try to use my name as much as possible and everything. But I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. And hopefully you all gain some great tips and you're going to go out there and have some awesome marketing plans and ideas. And I'm super excited. I'm super excited and I hope businesses grow and flourish this summer and that you have some time to get outside and dip, dip your feet in the lake. So you can see these are all the ways to connect with the Northland SBDC. If you um, have questions from this, um, Molly is, is definitely available to work with our folks, um, especially getting ready for summer marketing and those sorts of things. Obviously, she works year round, <laughs> but right now, <laughs> right, I do. yep. So um, you can find us on Twitter, I guess. Um, I, I'm not on Twitter, so I, I don't use that much, but Northland SBDC or Small Business Development Center on Facebook, we're very active there. Um, we're on Instagram and you can find us at LinkedIn if you want to look at our, our resumes and make sure, that, uh, make sure that we're actually doing the work we talk about. So um, that's where to find us. I did share the survey link for the webinar into the chat already but it will come up at the end um, as you log out of the, the webinar today. The, the survey for today's webinar will come up. 
it's just a great way to make sure that we're continuing to deliver content and webinars that that speak to our, our audience of small business owners and making sure that we can continue to deliver um, the trainings that you need as we as we go through our our uh, our year here. So let's see. So you know, thank you all for for attending and and coming and and hanging out with us for a little while. If you have any questions um, that you'd like answered as we end today's webinar, raise your hand, send something in the Q and A, send something in the chat. Um, we had a great great group of people here with us today, Molly. So. Um, we've had a little bit of chat going on in, in the meantime, and I, we greatly appreciate everybody's input um, and hope that, you know, you got something today that you can use to, uh, to move your small business forward. So Molly and I will be hanging out here for a little bit for a, another five minutes or so, just to make sure if anybody has questions that they're all answered before we leave. Um, and, you know, we'll just kind of hang around here for a little bit. But definitely great, great information, Molly, as, as always, um, for our attendees to start their marketing for their small business for the summer season. Um, definitely, I wouldn't think of tying my small business to weddings and things, but think of how many businesses would tie to a graduation, a wedding, uh, an event, a holiday, uh, you know, all those sorts of things. So Mm -hmm. especially if it's going to be held at you know someone's home or the reception or not even that like having a wedding you've got more family coming to town so do you need exterior painting done do you need lawn care service do you want landscaping um flowers i mean so much goes around that mm -hmm. so it doesn't have to just be product based as buying stuff it can be service based too so you can find a way to um everything that's like again people are traveling for graduations and Absolutely. Um, thanks, Nicole. Appreciate the, the props Thank for you, Molly. We agree. We think she's yeah. awesome. Awesome. <laughs> thanks for all the insight too. Yep, exactly. Awesome. Yep. And folks, if you have any questions, then feel free to share them in the Q&A or the chat or raise your hand. Otherwise, we'll, we'll just kind of hang out here until you're all, all have moved on with the rest of your day. And Molly and I can probably chat for hours about just whatever. About our gymnastics days. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Not quite as limber as I used to be. Well, and and while we're wearing yoga pants, because we've all been working from home for the last, you know, 15 months, I'm not sure exactly that I'm doing yoga every day. So, yeah. So I need somebody to hit me right. with some Facebook ads about doing yoga, I suppose. Right. Okay, good. Good to know. Yep. Perfect. And I'm glad I'm glad to see so many friends on here. I just got a shout out from my friend Bobby who attended. So um yep. So hope everything hope everything is going well with her and that she's super busy because that she's at ski hut. So Ooh, I imagine they are sold out of bikes and my son is working at a bike shop this summer too, um, back at college. So He's he said they got four bikes in and three were gone by the end of the day. So, mm -hmm. so I can Another, imagine that she's super busy. All those recreation type things are difficult to find right now. Um, you know, four wheelers, try and find one if you're trying to buy one new, things like that. Yep. So yep. Yep. Yeah. And absolutely. Candace can probably attest to that too, because I think Candace was gonna get some bikes and do the bike rental thing in there. Oh, oh. we're waiting on the bikes that we ordered in October. Yep, I can imagine. <laughs> Wow. Well, it's nice to know you can walk the Redhead Trail, so. Right. Hiking there is permitted. Mm -hmm. Although I don't know. Uh, I'd be nervous about seeing somebody. Multi-use, she said. I know. But, oh, coming around some of those corners. Oh, if I ran into somebody walking. Oh, try to be. Although I go pretty slow. Candace is moving up a level, and she's getting pretty hardcore. But I'm still back on the, on the green runs. <laughs> I haven't, uh, that whole downhill and lots of turns and rocks and stuff just freak me out. So I do the Masabi Trail, which is all nice and smooth. There's hills. That's fine. I can do hills. I just can't do the recognition of what's coming at me as quickly as I would need to my, you know, that, that, uh, 
what is it? It's a coordination thing. I think. You have to go to Cuyuna then where the trails are one ways. Okay. That so that's super helpful. And Bobby has a question about marketing number events. Um, oh yeah. Got any tips for marketing social 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 events? So I think that you're talking you know, social events. So that must be events that you've got going on at the store. And and I think Facebook has changed a little bit because the beautiful thing about creating an event on there is you used to be able to see everybody. Once you create an event, all all of your people that like your page were able to see it. But I still think it's a powerful marketing tool is to market it on Facebook, but also make sure that you're adding when you do a Google post on your Google business, and I don't know, Bobby, if you have access to the, their Google business account, but you should, and you should create a post because there is an event section in there. Okay, good, you do. There's an event section in there. And so then that event will be, um, when they're searching for you or searching for Ski Hut, all of a sudden they'll see that event listing at the bottom of your Google business listing. So you're reaching people further down the funnel. They're actually searching for you and your store and they're seeing that event. So it's seen by less people than on social, than on social but, it's, but it's, it's reaching your exact target market because they're searching for Ski Hut and then they're seeing that event that you're held. So make sure that you're, and then if it's starting to get some traction on Facebook and Instagram, make sure that you spend five, 10 bucks and boost that post. So it gets in front of everybody that likes the page and, and then all of their friends, because um, as someone who likes your page, all of my friends are also into outdoor sports and mountain biking. So they will all see once I like, once I like the event or I'm interested in event, then it shows up in, in my newsfeed that everybody else likes it. So I would make sure that it's added as an event on social, make sure that you're boosting it, and then make sure that you're adding it as a Google business listing. And traditional ways, if it's an event going on, like a bike swap or something, make sure that you're putting on Perfect Day Duluth, all the free calendars that you have access to, that we have access to in the area, make sure that you're maximizing out on that and do a press release. And I can help you with that. And that would be a great way to the, find ways to send it out to uh, all the local reporters. So if they're looking for something to do, oh, she's saying please with all caps and two exclamation points. So she needs help with some press release stuff. Okay, great. We will, ch we will chat about that then. Perfect. And yeah, that's one thing to not overlook is a press release. It's a simple little marketing tool. Um, so definitely available for everybody list the free calendars um well i know perfect duluth day is perfect duluth day is one um gosh uh let me think of some more and i'll email you the list do you know of any more betsy well there's northland events up here um you know it's it's one of the free calendars that that's out there i know the um tourism bureau the iron range tourism bureau which is at ironrange.org has some calendars and things. So they try and keep some of those dates and things updated. That doesn't necessarily reach the Duluth area as much, but it definitely reaches the other the other folks. Um, so yeah, and then if you, you know, visit Grand Rapids, visit Cook County, um, you know, venture north, there's all those different ways to to get engaged. So I'm not 100% sure what everybody's searching for as far as that goes. Yeah. And I know you can submit some things to the Duluth News Tribune too on their calendar thing, but I have to figure out what that address is. And um, an event you can put, you can send it to the chamber, and the chamber, if your chamber members, I'm assuming that the Duluth Chamber will put it into their yes. e-newsletter. The event at the bottom, and that gets sent out to thousands, mm -hmm. thousands mm -hmm. of people. So I would definitely utilize that. So that's why pre-planning in advance helps. So that you know if you've got an event coming up in June or July that you're taking care of everything in, in May. Yep. And so most chambers do have that as well. So the Laurentian Chamber, which covers the Quad Cities, and the Hibbing Chamber, the Chisholm Chamber, Grand Rapids Chamber, they all do try and publicize events for their members as well, regardless of if it's a chamber event or just a member event. So make sure you uh, you kind of tag in with them as well. Um, excellent. Well, it is right at 12 o'clock noon. Um, right on the nose. So I want to say thank you, Molly, for hanging out with us this morning and talking about summer marketing tips and and how to do those um, effectively reach your audience. Um, thanks to everyone. Please remember to jump in and take that survey as you exit today.
and we will say see you later for uh for today's webinar thanks so much everybody and we'll talk to you again soon thank you friends yep bye i bye. hope to see you all soon